Okay. All right. Uh, then I will go ahead and call this meeting to order. This is the um, Public Art Ad Hoc Committee on January 3rd, 2022. Um, we'll do a roll call. So I'm Christopher McMorin. Um, Zena Allen we, is not present. Um, Ruth Kazi. Here. There you are. And Sally Duell is not here. Um, Jen Edwards. Here. Wonderful. Uh, Shar Fagerston. I'm here. Wonderful. Uh, Nancy Froelich. Here. Yeah. All right. I'm here. My internet is funky. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. Um, uh, Janelle LaJoy. Here. Wonderful. And Peggy Yook. Here. Great. And then we also have um, Chelsea Starner with the city. Uh, so our first item is adopting our minutes from our last meeting, which was on November 30th, 2021. Welcome to 2022, everyone. Um, the only thing, if I can just start off, is um, under adjournment, it just says the meeting adjourned at p.m. Uh, I don't remember the exact time it ended, but <laughs> yeah. I actually have that on my Word version. It just didn't make it to the PDF, so I'll look back and fix that. That's great. Thank you. Um, are the, does the committee have any other um, comments on the minutes from November 30th? I just have a couple of simple ones. Yeah. Um, on section two, there's no numbers. So, boy, I wish there were numbers. But it says, uh, so it's online under section two, finalize subjects and look at sidewalk inlays. So it'd be line five. It says, Starner said the previously discussed the idea. So just cross out the. Oh, yeah. I, and then on the following paragraph in the middle, it says um, the landscape architect firm noted there were not any more locations that would not significantly impact utility lines. Maybe for easier reading, cross out there were not any more. And and leave um, the lack of additional locations that would not significantly impact utility lines. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other comments from the committee on the minutes? Okay. Uh, then sorry I, sorry, I have a quick comment. Yeah, sure. Um, I saw something earlier and I'm not finding it at this exact moment. Can we hold off on, can we hold for comments? I could maybe add that at the end before we accept the minutes. Is that? Yeah, I can, just with the rules? I can just table it to the end of our agenda. And I'll find it. I'll just let you know as soon as I find it and we'll, or at the end, whatever. And Yeah, I'll just add that down here. Cool, thank you. As long as there's no opposition to that. It okay. was... It was a minor grammatical error. I just didn't <laughs> note it. Yeah, no, should okay. have. <laughs> okay. Um, so then we'll come back to that. So then Thanks. our first real agenda item is um, in new business um, is to discuss the RFP vendor selection for um, the sidewalk inlays. So I'll turn that over to Chelsea. Hey, thank you. Uh, so I decided to put an agenda item summary for this, which is we use for city council, planning commission, other committees, um, just to try to give you some information to help you make a decision. Um, so as I sent out to you, we did only receive one response, uh, one formal response to the RFP. It was from the uh, designer that submitted a proposal last the last go round. Um, and if you'll, you can see in the summary of the RFP process, their price did go up a little bit. And they said that that was um, just to uh, add additional costs that they thought that it would take to work with the manufacturer um, that we would choose. Uh, and so at, at this point, um, I have contacted some metal fabricators that uh, were, I contacted a number of people, some of which were just people that I found and also the firms that 
um, our landscape architect company recommended to us that does projects like this. And so um, at least one of those companies um, said that they are willing, that, that they're willing to work with us if we choose a designer. So it's kind of going back to where we were, but that process didn't work very well for us. Uh, so I included information about what, how we might move forward. One possible idea, and you may have other ideas as well, which is fine, um, is to recommend to the city council to uh, move forward with a contract for a buy web design um, in the amount of $11,300 for the design portion of the project. And then uh, to seek quotes, direct quotes for the fabrication. I think at this point, it would benefit us just to um, go out to those vendors who have responded to me in some way along the process. I have probably at least three that have had some sort of communication with me back when I've sent, th sent things out or um, just asked them questions about the whole process if it's something that they would work on. So we have, a, I think, at least three that I could get um, quotes from for the, app, the fabrication portion of it. But, uh, would work with a design, a designer. So we primarily would work with the designer, but uh, they could work from the perspective of here, here's what will and will not work so they can have some conversations uh, with the fabricator to help move the process along. Um, the other option uh, is to look for a designer directly. So really pick your brains, pick anyone else's brains that asks staff for some ideas. Um, anyone local that may be able to help us with this or semi-local, it will just make it easier if it's someone, you know, that's kind of familiar with the area. Um, so it would really just be trying to reach out and uh, utilize any contacts any of you may have um, and not simplify it down, but just simplify it down. Say, here is what we are looking for. Is this something that you think you could do? Can you give us an estimate or an hourly cost or something so that we would know what we were getting into. Um, because I, I do believe if we can go that route that it will it might come out less than the abide web design, it would be the hope. Um, and so those are the two primary um, options that I see. You may have other options, but at this point, as you all know, we're kind of in this time crunch that's you know, getting to be more of a time crunch as the, the months are passing. So, uh, you know, one of these options, uh, although they're not perfect, would, would just get us, you know, into the, it's less going out and trying to give everyone an opportunity, but we've done that and we've just not had responses and we've done it in two different ways to try to get the most responses possible. And we're just not getting responses. Um, so to me that, just says that it, it might be more beneficial to just get very clear and direct. Like for the manufacturers here, this is what we would want out of this, just very clear. Um, I did get a kind of a general estimate. I don't know that it included everything that we had in our RFP for the fabrication portion, but it was a general estimate from one of the companies. And um, I want to say, but I'm not sure, and I can get back to you if you like the information, but that it was, if we were to go the, the uh, brass, not the brass, the um, bronze route, it was about $30,000 um, for the fabrication portion. Um, and they also said that they can do, um, they have some other metal options that are less expensive. I think it was cast iron. So that would be a possibility. And it, I want to say that it was half to it was probably fifteen to twenty thousand um, dollars, so it was it was quite a bit less. It's going to be a really different product, though, and look very different. Um, <clears throat> so that's just to keep in mind. That's not solid, um, but it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of how much the fabrication portion of it could cost when you're weighing in this design portion. And of it. Yes. sorry, do you know what the city council was hoping we would spend on that portion of it? I don't know, Ruth or Peggy, I don't know if you discussed it in your other review committee. I don't know that I've 
I've not heard of a solidified, this is the project amount. And I've asked the landscape architect okay. um, if they had a solid cost and I don't know that they've gotten there yet. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we've talked about it. a cost, a total cost at all. Peggy? So on the, um, on the agenda item page, it says that the, the city council authorized $3,500. Yeah, that's, I think that's for just the design portion. Okay. I was wondering if the city council, I, I know they haven't allocated anything, but if there had been any discussion of what okay. they were for the actual manufacturing portion. Okay, thank uh -huh. you. Yeah. So I was thinking, boy, that's not very much for yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> that doesn't seem like much even for design to me. Yeah. And for one, maybe like one of them all together would yeah, be yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted no, to No, you're fine and do interrupt if yeah, I'm and, good with interruption. Okay. And then yes, uh Peggy and Ruth. I was wondering um if if we have contacted or Chelsea has contacted uh, like the high school CAD team. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like that would be a fun thing for the kids to do. And then plus their philomathites and, you know, they could, as they get and turn old, they could see these uh, inlays <laughs> that maybe they had something to do with. Have you, you're, you're nodding your head. So you have contacted them? I haven't contacted oh. Philomath. Um, you, know, you know, the CAD aspect of it, it's, it's pretty artistic. So, you know, it, there's a possibility to get that wrapped in. My, my issue would be the timing of it. Um, I, I don't know how fast, and I don't know, Nancy, you've talked about throwing things out. That was with the college level, getting things back kind of quickly. I don't know how fast something like that could work. I do know that um, this Abide did contact um, Corvallis for manufacturing to see if they were interested in going in with them on a design manufacturing. Um, and they were not able to provide that part of it. That was a different, it's kind of different than your question, but just adding that in as um, a, a high school that was contacted. Um, I just want to get to Ruth really quick since. Oh, I just wanted to ask if you um, had asked or could ask the city of Ashland how much they spent in there in lace. Yeah, I had the cost from them. I can look it up again. Um, I do have their, the quote that, that they went off of. Um, I think it was less than this one that I got, but that's not surprising because they purchased theirs, I think over a year ago. And um, the, the price of metal has just Skyrocketed. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to be even hard, difficult to get a, a quote from someone and have them hold it any longer than 30 days for us. You know, we're going to have to like lock it in probably just because it's changing so much. Um, mm -hmm. But I will look that up. I know that I mentioned it, I think, to you all at one point. So I can look that up again. Great. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Ruth, did you have more? Um, I was just going to ask did, did Ashley do design and um, fabrication separately or together? So they did theirs together. That's why they chose that firm in New York, even though they'd been looking um, more local. Uh, they chose the firm in New York because they did both the combination. I think when it boiled down to it, I think they were having issues too, trying to get the pieces put together and, um, you know, co contact, get multiple people in contact with each other. Um, Rose, Roseburg also did a project and I think they had two different uh, phases of their project. So I've also spoken with some people that were involved in that project. They did local manufacturing, at least for the first one, but they also had a lot, a lot of lessons learned. So they did some local stuff, piecing it together. And it, I think it was um, not a bad process for them, but they, by their phase two, they said that they'd learned a whole lot of things that um, that they wanted to, to change for phase two, some of which was even that the inlays were too slippery and they had to get some kind of a surface treatment done to them. So um, I think that's something to keep in mind is while it may seem um, really great to do something local, 
the fabrication portion of it, I think we do want someone who's familiar with it and particularly because it's ODOT, they have to be ADA compliant. They have to know what they're doing, um, you know, to be able to do that. Um, one last question. The RFP did go to the firm in New York, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it did. Yeah, and I didn't get any response from them. If it's something that we are interested in still, I have no problem. I mean, just directly calling people. They may have a lot of work or it could have been just a holiday thing. Some people, you know, end of year at all. I mean, I'm talking October, they start to say, we're, you know, we're not going to yeah. put anything further on our plate for the rest of the year. So it, it, we might have better luck now that it's January. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And then we'll go uh, Nancy, Janelle, and then Jen. Hi, I just had a couple questions. I definitely can reach out to the faculty at OSU because I'm still friends with them. It's tough to know which designers continue to do logo work and illustration work because graphic design is a pretty broad field. Um, but I can definitely do that. Now, a lot of folks don't necessarily still live in this area, but they did go to school here. Is that okay? Are we looking specifically for a designer that lives in Corvallis or Columbus? I guess I'm just wondering if that would be an issue. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't as long as we get issue. amazing. What's that? I don't think it's an issue. I think it's more about someone who's generally familiar mm -hmm. um, with the area and someone who, like, we have a connection to someone that is sure. readily able to be contacted um, instead of just sending out an email to people we don't know. If there's anyone that we do know that might be interested, I think um, I would love it if you all could email me some of that information and maybe we could talk about um, how to contact people and what what we would put out there if that's the route that you decide to go. Yeah, I guess I'm curious like what, what info I can give. Like, can I okay. say this is our target budget? I mean, I know it can go either way. Like sometimes in the design world, it's like, this is our budget. Are you interested or are you not? Or sometimes right. you get in a bunch of bids and pick. Um, right. I don't know if that's information we can say. This is our, our goal. Yeah, so I have not been given a specific budget because okay. it's such a large project. Yeah. And I think that the art and all of those aspects have been lumped right. in together. Right. Um, I can see if I can get that budget. I think there's kind of a, a hope. So we started with $3,500 that, you know, we didn't get anyone biting off on that. And the, the submission that we did get was, you know, over 10,000. Right. It's, it's kind of a stretch. I think we could try to estimate what we think that it could be, um, you know, somewhere in between those two, because we obviously right. didn't get anyone biting on the, you know, the $3,500 range, but we may be able to do an estimate. And then as far as what the work would entail, we can just um, really strip down the, the RFP, the original one um, for the design work and just send out basically just the scope of work so that it, doesn't, it looks non-intimidating. Yeah. Um, so RFPs can look intimidating if you're someone who's just, um, you know, I just, I just do art over here. I, I yeah. live in Columbus or Corvallis or, and, you know, to, to look at something like that, if it's not something that you are used to doing, it can, it can be intimidating. So we can definitely um, just make that less intimidating and get the, 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 the basic information that we would need to get across. That's great. And um, can you remind me the deadline of when we want to start, like actually reviewing sketches? Is that around the corner or is it um, so it wouldn't hurt to make a renewed deadline. One thing that I can do also is the firm that has, I have a firm that's been very actively communicating with me that, um, that does fabrication. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, the, the gentleman that I've been talking to there has been great with all kinds of information. So I can ask him just from his perspective, what kind of a timeline they would be looking at for manufacturing. And then I can backtrack from the, the project deadline, um, the manufacturing, and, and kind of see how much time we think we have for that portion yeah, of it. Yeah, I'm just, you know, thinking in, in terms of like reaching out to designers, they're want they're going to want to know the budget yeah. and they're going to want to know the steps of when they're going to expect sure. sketches and then right. final revision and then time to go back mm -hmm. and forth between the fabrication yeah. to fine tune things. So it's, 
if we have all that laid out in a very precise document, um, mm -hmm. I know at least graphic designers would be more willing to. Right. It's a, it, it is a little difficult because of the nature of the approval process, yeah. but I can try to get something that, that helps with that. Yeah. Um, and, and is updated. We, we kind of have that in the RFP, um, but yeah, it's, it's a little difficult because you all are going to kind of decide and um, go back and forth on what you want. And then it needs to go to the city council who could either say, great, we love that. Or they may say, we want revisions or we don't like mm -hmm. that. Or we want to see, you know, the one that you scrapped. So there's a, a little bit of that that's hard to know um, because it's not just you as a client saying, here is my timeline. There's kind of a lot of people involved. Yeah, so, um, yeah. More but I know what you're saying. Process. It does help when people um, can understand what, you know, what's expected of them. Or at least like on the very first page, there's the bullet point nutshell mm -hmm. version, and then right. it can go on and be 15 pages long. But just like the quick glance, like mm -hmm. information would be great. great. So, that's all. Thank you. Uh, Janelle. Okay, so hi, thank you. Um, I want to sort of piggyback, which seems to be a common occurrence on things that Nancy said. Um, I, I really like the idea of simplifying the RFP. I think that if you're not in the world of RFPs, you may, or academia, you may not know. And so the idea of putting out something very simple, especially on social media that anyone can, anyone can go on any of their graphic design -y things and design, design something and submit it. I mean, if that's the case, something like that is cool. And I'm sorry, I'm a little all over the place because I've been making notes, I didn't want to interrupt. I'm going to go back to what Chelsea said that the bronze is $30,000. Cast iron is kind of cool. It kind of is philomathy too. So if that falls in with the ODOT um, situation, I think that that's actually kind of, I don't want to use the word gritty too much, but it it is a little bit more it fitting in with what we've talked about with like the, the black metal hardware and the benches and those kinds of things. Um, cast iron would be, I think kind of pretty cool. It also brings a little bit of a pioneer spirit to it and whatever. Um, and then with that, I was also thinking about the university and if there's a grad student that has a project or, I mean, there could be a bunch of things at the university, but clearly Nancy has that handled. Um, I was thinking if there's like some kind of foundry type college I'm, I'm thinking Eastern Oregon. I don't even know. I'm just throwing ideas out there. Someone might know something, um, you know, where students learn to pour and do amazing things. And that might be a way to reach out to them. Maybe there's a, um, you know, I, I forget the acronym, but um, that's an idea. And then there's also the guy in town that does the horseshoe sculptures. I don't know if anyone has reached out to him and just maybe asked about his community and who else he knows that might be, I mean, maybe he's not the guy, but maybe he knows someone or knows of someone that knows someone. Um, so I'm just trying to get all my things out. Like, uh, I think, oh, I think that's all I have, except that on our agenda for today, the meeting date says January 10th, but it's the third. And I think I'll be quiet now. Thank you. Where where does it say the 10th? Page 1 of 2 on tonight's agenda summary. The meeting date in the top right says 1-3, but then on under the title and topics, the meeting date says January 10th. Okay, yes, thank you. Not even a, but yeah. Yes, no, thank you. <laughs> totally. Okay, and then um, Jen, and then I'll get to you, Peggy. Hi, 
uh, yeah, so a couple things. First off, I want to let you know that I did send the link uh, from the city to Felix Oliveros, who is the uh, graphic design academic advisor. Honestly, I think part of the problem was it's just timing. Um, and because, and he's art as well. So he's the graphic design and art advisor. But I think because it was like right at the end of the term, you know, people were doing finals, all that kind of stuff. And I don't think it was, you know, something that could be accomplished very easily. Um, but yeah, that was one of the first things I thought about too, is like reaching out. That being said too, um, I had reached out when I saw there was only one submission. I was trying to get my friend to submit quickly. Um, and he was like, ah, and he couldn't do it. But I do have a graduate who works at Oregon State, who's a graduate. Uh, actually, but Nancy, you might even know him. I don't know. You probably had him in class. Uh, Michael McDonald, who also works at Oregon State. He worked for the uh, Career Development Center, helped design some of their new branding and logos, uh, and is willing to submit. Um, he just wasn't willing. When I threw it at him, you know, at the last minute, and he's willing to do, you know, much less than what was currently out there. Um, so that is something if, you, but I know he was a little intimidated by the like letters of recommendation and that kind of thing. Now he has it. He actually has his own little side gig going on um, where he does like consulting and web design and things like that for people. Um, so he could get letters, but that just was something that he was just like, seriously. So just to let you know, that was something uh, a little intimidating for him if he wanted to just submit something as a proposal. I think it, yeah, I think it was just a letter of interest or just. You, know, you can see that um, the submission that is attached, they just kind of had a little- Yeah, but I think it said three letters of recommendation on the reference, post. They, maybe references. So that's pretty yeah. typical for any government, anything that you're going into a contract, we, we would like to know. Oh, no, I get it. Yeah, I just, I'll have yeah. to reread it because I thought I read it again. Oh, like, oh, I thought it said letters. It, it could have said that. It's possible. There, You know, there's the language that gets, and I think like that to and... <laughs> get letters, especially when we're talking about we had what a two, three week turnover. Oh, yeah. no, we I think that know. probably really hindered people. And they went, there's just no way I could get that. Whereas yeah. references, yes, or links to websites, possible. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Could be possible. And then I noticed that the submission didn't even have letters of re reference anyway. So or they didn't even have really even references other than just yeah, was... their portfolio. I did, I did look at their, they did include everything they were required to include in the submission. Um, it's, you know, definitely minimalism, but they, they did have all the requirements. So, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, those are just the things, but I'm happy I could definitely reach. I mean, I work for the College of Liberal Arts, so, you know, Felix and I are BFF, so I could send it out again if you want and have him send it out to either alum. So he'll have a full list. Right. Um, of contacts already because that's just what he does mm -hmm. um, it, and or he could send it to like seniors or things like that okay. um, that would be so yeah route. if you decide to go that route and that's what you as a committee would like to do mm -hmm. then I will um, regroup on that submission information um, you know at this point I think we, we need interest, but we still need to know that it's someone, you know, that has some sort of website or can submit some images just so that you all know um, you need something to look at, right? Like, um, and in so, all honesty, I could get Michael's portfolio put together. I, he was just too stressed about it. Literally, sure, it was like time, 12 hours. Yeah, short timelines, not enough. Yeah. So, yeah, if, if you to go I can honestly well. get you his portfolio probably in two days if you wanted yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to say, I just looked at Michael's picture because it's been a few years and I remember him and he's awesome and he would be really great to work. He actually with. designed my set when I worked for the Herberger. He nice. designed my set, never had not designed a set before. Nice. And he was like, sure, okay, cool, I'll do that. He's um, very. I'm also, I was just gonna say, I'm also friends with the chair of graphic design. So I could, I mean, Felix is, you know, one notch, you know, in between, but. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like we know everybody over there in some way or another. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, thank you very much. And then we'll go to Peggy. Yeah. I was wondering, Chelsea, when you send out um, per uh, Nancy's request about, uh, you know, the timeline with the dollar amount and such, were you going to send that to everybody? Yes. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll send any anything other than discussions, which, you know, you can't have 
too many of you discussing via email, um, but I will send out anything that okay. I'm digging up here that you'd like to see. Great, um, thank you. I can send that out to everyone. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, so just if I can sort of help us guide our discussion here, it seems like there's a whole lot of talk of reaching out to more local artists, and I haven't really heard any talk of recommending the city council award the contract to abide web design. Am I hearing that right? Is there, um, is there any <laughs> maybe other thoughts on that, or is that kind of the direction everyone's going? Um, I agree with that. Okay. Because if so, um, we can entertain a motion for um, the option two in um, Chelsea's proposal to have a staff pursue additional design services and get direct quotes. Um, if that's, it seems like that's the direction the committee's going. Would someone like to, to make that motion? I motion option two. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll second. Okay, so it's moved and seconded um, to recommend that staff pursue additional design service options and seek direct quotes for the fabrication of the inlays, bring the results to the next meeting, and note the selected vendor and cost may be presented to the city council for award approval. Um, is there any discussion of that motion? Could I add to the motion or is it too late? <laughs> yeah, you can always amend a motion. <laughs> I just would like to maybe add to that language that um, just what you just said that we're reaching out with that some of our committee members, either like however you want to word it, that no people in the local community are reaching out to the local folks in hopes of a better, you know, outcome. Okay. If you're making a motion, Janelle, you do have to make the motion. We we have to write it out word for word. So <laughs> just so, so you know. <laughs> so if I'm amending to say that our committee members are reaching out to local community members for further design options. Sure. Is there a second on that? Okay. Um, and then I guess, is there any opposition to that amendment? Okay, great. So then um, we'll just add that to the end of the, the other language probably. Um, is there any further discussion on the motion um, as amended? Yeah, Ruth? I just have a clarifying question. Does this have to be a graphic design? or could an artist submit something? Yeah, it can be um, an artist, graphic designer. So okay. the metal fabricator that I've been talking to said that they're, what he said pretty much word for word is that what they're used to doing is working with local designers and artists to give them the vision and then they turn it into this, um, you know, basically specs for, for designing it. Um, okay. So yes, I think there are probably some mediums that are going to be a little more difficult um, to convey into that, but I think in general, you know, to, to make sure that it translates well from yeah. the art to the, the inlay, but yes, I think that there's uh, opportunity for, you know, um, anyone who can design, make, draw, something like this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Peggy? Chelsea, this this person that you that you said that he's you know he's used to working with local people. Did he give you a list of people, local people of designers that he is used to working with that um, maybe we could kind of latch on to that information? And have you already, or did he give I, you names? So I can ask him. They are they are in Washington. I believe they're in Spokane. Okay. Um, but he, you know, they may have done work in Oregon, so they may have, okay. it might not be someone in Plymouth or Corvallis, but they may have someone in the Willamette Valley that they've worked with. I can uh, definitely ask him. Okay. And it would probably it be, local. Okay. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Janelle? So just to clarify, theoretically, the graphic design or artwork could come from anyone. I mean, anyone's spouse or 
mom or like i mean it's like any person could design sort of the rough outline to give us the idea of what to take to the metal worker is that kind of right um so they need a little bit more to work off than that and the issue would be that we're not in a position where we can say that we're asking for submissions from everyone for this and we're you know um it's not like a photo contest we really need to pick someone to go with to work with so that person needs to show the committee um that, that they can do that work so it might be difficult if it's someone who doesn't have um, experience in doing that work and producing something that could be made into something else, you know, so yep. that's gotcha. where you, might, you might get into some issues with that. So it's not to say that if we had all the time in the world that we couldn't do something like that. I think we could. Um, I don't think that we have time to do that kind of a process. I think the other thing to keep in mind, just in terms of the art, is that it, we have to remember it's going to be like embossed on metal um so it may be harder to like emboss some sort of hand-drawn sketch than a you know more like digital or more like blocky graphic design onto metal um so just someone who understands that at least um you know not that you can't do a hand-drawn thing but just sort of what the art style needs to be uh, but nancy um i just had a quick question for chelsea i was curious if you in talking to the folks that would be fabricating these did they tell you what file format they're going to want to receive the imagery in i'm just curious if that how that works because obviously we're not going to hand them pieces of paper that have been you know drawn on right so <laughs> right. is it a jpeg is it a vector graphic have they said anything to you about they haven't okay. um, you know i i hesitate to to ask them too many questions yeah. no, because I get it. You know, I don't want them spending a bunch of time and then they submit a quote and we say, never mind. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's a little bit of caution and how much, but I, I can ask them, um, you know. I was just curious because that might determine different. who creates right. the, right. you know, the, the imagery that gets transferred to them. Because if, you know, we don't know how to get it into the, I mean, I'm sure everything can be rasterized into whatever file format, but I was just right. curious if you had that info. That makes sense. That's all. Uh, yeah, thank you. So we're still on discussion of the motion for option two. Is there any further discussion of this motion or should we go to a vote? Okay, um, then we will vote, I guess, all in favor. Um, raise your hand and or say aye if I can't see your hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, great. So that looks like everyone. Um, so then uh, just, you know, for formality, all those opposed, if you can raise your hand or say aye. Fantastic. I'm assuming, Shar, that hand is still from our last, there we go. Um, so then that motion carries unanimously. Um, and that means we can uh, move on to our brief discussion of some of the next steps for the committee. Um, unless if there's any final thoughts on the, um, RFP. Obviously, we'll have to talk about it a little bit more for our third agenda item, which is selecting the next meeting date, because we just said that Chelsea needs to bring us options for the next meeting. So we got to decide, um, you know, how long we want that to be. But well, it could be the next meeting where you discuss this topic. We'll okay, just, yeah. We'll not yeah. hold too much on, on that, okay. <laughs> that portion of the language. Okay. Um, so yeah, but if we just want to do a brief discussion of the next steps, since this has come up a few times, um, I'll just do sort of a quick recap and then I'll turn it over to Chelsea. Um, the, so the, sort of the big things that the city council and the streetscape design committee have delegated to us are this project of the sidewalk inlays um, and then the bike racks. They have sort of, um, the, you know, you know, bike rack is like a, it's like a, a curve of metal that you attach your bike to. And then some of these in the middle of that curve is sort of a metal plate that we can um, have additional artwork in. My understanding is that it wouldn't be like printed. It's just sort of like you can cut out sections of it. So it would be sort of very like 2D, you know, um, blocky art, two colors, just either metal or not metal. Um, but that is gonna be our next um, project. 
And we may sort of overlap that with this project a little bit, depending on the timing. Um, and then our final thing that we'll need to look at down the road are um, the plinths, because in the current design, there's, um, I think it's like 18 or 12 or something. There's a good number of these plinths that will be put throughout the, the downtown area, which are essentially um, just these like raised sort of cylindrical prisms. So just like big raised circles um, that will be around the, the downtown area that then can have artwork placed on top of them. Um, so because of the nature of that, that's not as urgent for us because those plinths will be installed without us. Um, so that's not like a pressing thing for ODOT to need to know what those plinths are. They'll just put them in. Um, but then down the road, we will need to decide what goes on them, what kind of artwork we want to um, be on the, the stands, essentially, that we're putting up downtown. Um, so that's my understanding. Chelsea, if I forgot anything, please let me know. <laughs> no, I think that's a really good summary. Um, I I did reach out to a couple of places about the bike racks. Okay. Um, and I did reach out to DLA, the landscape architect, for they had a company that I believe is in, I want to say Junction City, um, that, that does uh, that work and that they had talked to when they were um, designing for this project. So uh, there are a number of Oregon and Willamette Valley companies that look like they do this work. So that should be a fairly straightforward thing. And um, so that the bike racks would be the next step in the kiosk and then the plinth. So that's kind of the order we're going in, like you said, um, basically. So I just wanted to put the bike racks out there. Um, I can show, I'm going to try if you're okay with it to show an example yeah, um, please. Of, of what that looks like. Let me see if I can get this to work. Okay, so can you all see that? So the, you can't see it? Now we can. <laughs> okay. um, so this is what uh, in general uh, that that would look like. So it's uh, kind of the curved bike rack. They're going to be in um, I think there are going to be like six of them. So the inner um, racks probably wouldn't have design just because it saves money. You can't really see the design, but the outer um, racks would have some sort of design like that, like cut out um, of the bike rack. Um, Nancy? Um, would the company that actually makes these um, sort of die cut metal artwork do they also do the design or do we could is it possible whoever we find to design the inlays if we really enjoyed working with them if that's something that they could also do so we don't have to find two designers and then it's a similar visual language it's coming mm -hmm. from a similar voice even if it's different imagery um so i guess my question is does the person who make who makes it also design it or could we provide a designer I'm guessing that they probably do both. It seems like the type of work where if we were interested in them doing something, these companies may do that for us. Um, but I think um, that yes, that it is something that, so if we got done, we went through this process for the inlays and we said, hey, since we already had you and know how much you cost, it would be really great to, to tack this on. This, this part of the project is not obviously going to be as, as much work. Yeah. Um, as all these different um, inlays. And um, so, yeah, I think that it's probably possible to do either way. I would think that this is the type of company where people come to and say, I want this, right? Like I want my name and that font, here it is. Okay. So yeah, I think there's probably flexibility. Okay. Also, if I can just add one thing I forgot to mention, as you can see in the photos here, um, these are usually like bolted or drilled into the sidewalk, which is a reason why they're not as pressing for us because um, they don't actually need to be like laid in with the cement like the, the um, sidewalk inlays do. So they can happen down the road once the, the sidewalk has already sort of been, um, you know, the concrete has been laid and everything. But yeah, Peggy? I know that um, months and months and months ago when, the, when we were working on the streetscape um, Main Street plan that the bike racks were talked about quite a bit. We did, um, the design wasn't really uh, decided upon, 
but Chelsea, do you have do you have that information from when we were talking about the bike racks? We were talking about the bike racks really more than the inlays. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I assume there are minutes related to that. So okay. we could go back to that. Um, I'm not sure what the direction was for this committee. I was told the direction was to choose um, the designs, but if you think that maybe there was already some discussion on general ideas for the design. There then, was, and, and yeah, there was, we asked the public, we asked the citizens what kind of things that they liked. Okay. I'd hate to see us deviate yeah. from, from that. Um, I wish I could remember it better because I was in them, but. Um, oh, that's okay. <laughs> no, we have, yeah, we have um, I'm minutes. I've seen them in the folder, so I can look through those and see what I can find in there. Okay, I'll look through some of my stuff too and see okay. if I, what I come up with. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. that's good to know. Uh, Janelle? I was going to ask a, a question that was related to what Peggy asked, but I think that Peggy, you went back further to the real question, so I won't ask it. Um, but the other question I do have is I um, saw something about a bike repair station. What's the vision for that, if anyone knows? Yeah, I haven't, I know that that question has come up. I haven't heard anything solidified on that. Um, so I don't know that that's part of this project or anything. Uh, I do know in the town that I was in, um, the Rotary, it was actually the Rotaract Club, um, made that their little personal project and they were purchasing and installing those kind of several places in town. Um, so I can say that they're really, they're neat, especially if you're somewhere that has a lot of, um, you know, cyclists and certainly Columbus does. So I don't know if that's part of this project, but I think it's something that, you know, could definitely come up, um, you know, as an idea to add on. And I, would that be something that would be added onto this committee specifically? Like, would there be art involved in those or would that just? Yeah, they're, they're, you just purchase them. I, I actually purchased the, um, the ones that we had in Silverton. So they're, they're pretty much, you just purchase, you can choose yeah. colors, but they usually just choose what goes with your downtown um, or the areas that they're in. So yeah, that's something that I can bring up though as an idea from this committee, um, this popped up because I, I think that that's something that um, could, you know, uh, be beneficial to the community. Can you send me an email maybe with the um, information from Silverton? Sure. Awesome, thanks. All right. Um, so yeah, those are the next steps. We don't have a specific timeline right now, but that's sort of the next item on our agenda. Um, yeah, Chelsea. Can I add, can I share one more um, picture with you before we move to our next meeting scheduling? Um, so I have only one, oh, I have two. Um, these are from the metal manufacturer. Can you see this? Yeah. So this is an inlay that they've done. So just so that you can see, um, they were, you know, got they got art from someone that did art for uh, Rock Ridge, whatever that is. Um, and then this is what it ends up looking like um, for them to be able for their specifications to be able to pour it. And I have a second one too that I can show you. This one's a little. Um, more simplified, but this is just an additional to show you that this this is what they're trying to get at. Um, these are from San Francisco, some work that they did. But it just gives you a general idea. Of this is what they're looking for. So they they need something that can translate into this. Um, they generally do. They said the most affordable option for us is like a 2D design. So it wouldn't be anything over complicated, but it would be um, kind of 2D. Uh, and I think when you start to go up, up too much, your, your cost goes up. The cost that they gave me was for 2D. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that that's just as a visual, that's what, what we're trying to get to so that the um, fabricator can, can pour these. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Sure. Um... I guess any questions on any of that before we move on to the next? I like, sorry, I like the idea of that, that each uh, sort of 
round is the same, but then the text is just different and telling a story through town. And so that might be, I mean, that becomes a whole new situation for someone to create a story, right? That, 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 that makes us weave all of these ideas we've had into a story, not into a picture. But maybe that's something too, because you could theoretically have 20 different um, inlays. They would all have the same picture, but then just have a story. I don't know, I'm spitballing, but just saying like, that's an, that's an idea if it might simplify the production that then you're doing text but the artistic situation is the is consistent. So then you're just changing text. And I don't know how in production with metal that changes things. So anyway, I just I'm just throwing things out there. I will just add for future consideration. So the the estimate that I did get from that was just from that one, and that doesn't mean that's how they all work, but for each, um, you know, they have to make a mold. And I think it's twenty eight hundred dollars for each mold. So every different change that you're doing is going to cost $2,800 just to make the mold and then they they pour um, the gotcha. cost to make them so just I think that's why originally we'd said let's go with four and repeat them um was because that part of the cost could, could get really high I think so just yeah keep in mind. I, I really like the idea though you know yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you um Okay, so then we'll move on to our next agenda item, which is selecting our next meeting date. And I think this can also maybe serve as a little more of a discussion about sort of timing in general. Um, we need to pick when we're meeting next, and then we might also want to just pick for Chelsea, um, is that next meeting when we want to get all this feedback about the uh, design for the inlays, or do we want to have a meeting in between? Um, do we want to stick with our sort of once a month schedule? Um, I don't know, Chelsea, is there, do you have a recommendation or is it just whatever? We um, well, if you're wanting to get any kind of feedback, I may be able to get some feedback in, in four weeks um, total to get, I think I could get um, hopefully some fabrication quotes, which that's not, it's not really the focus um, for you as long as we have someone who can do the work and they're doing it in the metal that you you like the look of. Um, that's not as important at this point as the designers, but I think we could hear back. Um, I don't know what Ben, Nancy, you've mentioned some other people. Does it seem like if we gave people a couple weeks or a little bit over two weeks to respond, if it was more simplified, do you think that's something that sounds like we could get some responses from folks? Uh, I, th I think so if there's not like letters of recommendation, um, if it's, if it's work they're interested in, it's probably similar to work they already do. So they can just, they could put it together, I think in a couple weeks and they, it's just like the, the, they need to be able to get the information very easily. And so simplifying that document, I think would be really helpful because they'll know right away if they want to apply or not. So. I think two weeks is, if we reach out right away, like you can't wait a week, but. Right. Um, I don't know how quick that document can come into the world. Um, <laughs> I sh yeah, I should be able to get that. I mean, even maybe tomorrow, but within okay. a few days. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah. I think so. Okay. I, mean, I can email people tomorrow, so. Yeah, I'm just thinking by the end of the week and then if I could have it. Um, back I'd like to have my the packet out you know Christopher and I've been shooting for a week ahead of the meeting um but even if we could just get it out four or five days ahead if it were helping us extend that um deadline a little bit to try to get responses we'll just we can work with that uh, great um Janelle just super quick oh, I want to agree that making it easy to give the work samples to give the you know, the references, the folks that you could give a call to, but not make it a super complicated process because that just turns everybody off, I think, especially the artistic community. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you. So if we shoot for January 31st, that's exactly four weeks from today. It doesn't look like there's any other city meetings that day. Um, 
do you want to stick with Mondays? I know we've been kind of all over the board. So we've had, we started with Thursdays. We've had a Wednesday scheduling yeah. sometimes difficult, but I just wanted to throw that out there. If there's a, a preference for day that you'd like to generally stick with. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, does the committee have a preference on days or? Okay. Um, well, that makes it easy <laughs> then. <laughs> should we just go ahead and stick with Monday for now? And then if something comes up, we can change it. Okay. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so then I guess I'll move that we um, schedule our next meeting for January 31st at 5.30 PM um, via Zoom. Do I have a second on that? Second. Great. Um, is there any discussion on that? All right, any opposition to that? <laughs> All right, fantastic. Um, so, oh yes, Chelsea? Uh, it's not opposition. Okay. Um, I just wanted to add something before you sign. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to say that uh, in the meantime, so if you have any names of anyone, um, you can send them to me just so I have that information. We like to kind of have it, but I will also send anything out that um, I'm producing to everyone um, so that you can just, you know, spread the word, which is fine. I don't, I don't have to know who it is, but if there's anyone that you don't want to reach out to, but you can give a good idea, just let me know if you have any information on them and I can reach out and send it to them. And the other thing is think about the bike rack. So if you have time between now and that meeting, I don't know that we'll talk about bike racks at that meeting, but we may be able to schedule a meeting, at, you know, a couple of weeks later. Um, so just in between, it's good to keep some momentum on these other things as well. So if you have any ideas, you can research those. Um, you can just look for, you know, bike racks like I'd search for um, and find some ideas. And yeah, that would be great too. Yeah, great. Thank you, uh, Janelle. I would just like to go back to Peggy's comment real quick because there was that whole community survey that was done for that whole year or whatever. That information is sitting somewhere. It's in a file and we don't need to reinvent the wheel that's out there. So like we should look at that so that we can use that as a jumping off point instead of, instead of having a big, huge conversation about stuff that's already been discussed. Yeah, I guess Chelsea, do you think, do you think it might be reasonable to if you're able to locate the, that information for us to go over that at the next meeting? Yeah, I'll look. Um, I'm not sure if it's on the website or not. I'm not sure where that was put, but I will uh, dig up what I can, see if there okay. is um, what I can find and give you guys some background information. Okay, so yeah, I'll just work with Chelsea to see sort of if, what the agenda will look like for next month if we have time to go over that. If we don't, we'll do it at the next meeting, but yeah. Uh, Nancy? Um. I remember at the farmer's market, maybe was this past summer or two summers ago, they had a, a booth where the public could like just sticky note mark like the aesthetics that they liked and imagery that they really responded to. So I don't know if that's data we could also. Yeah, see. yeah. yeah, we we have that. I've seen that. So they did, um, the firm had done like a presentation after that that I have seen that showed here are the general ideas um, of what came up. So yeah, I can see what I can can pull up on that. It's all in the streetscape committee. Yes. Data. Yes. Now that yes. I think of it, it's all it's all there. I think it's all there. I think that they um, they summarized everything as they were getting that information. So I think that it's in the presentations as they were going along. Before art was a situation on its yes. own. Yeah. Great. Um, Okay, any final thoughts, discussions before we head out for the evening? All right, uh, then I will adjourn this meeting at uh, 6.32 p.m. and we will see you all at 5.30 p.m. on January 31st.